Good afternoon, and thank you everyone for joining today's session. So we have a special options play educational event with TMX where we're going to talk about option strategies for a bear market. And we can certainly briefly talk about the market because it looks like we're 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 still in that pivotal moment, if you will, um, especially with news that came out of um, Royal Bank of Canada today and, and lots going on in the market. But nonetheless, there are option strategies can be utilized in any type of market environment. So they can be in, in a bearish market, a bullish market, or, or a neutral market, as long as you understand how they're comprised, how them accordingly. So I'll walk you through strategies for bear markets. And we have some, some slides in here where we'll talk about ideas and things of that nature as well. We'll make sure we talk about how that translates in other markets. That way we wrap our head around the entire picture. So thank you for joining me today. Let's go ahead and get started. And of course, if you have any questions, um, I do have the chat window up and the Q&A. So please feel free just to, to chat. All right. So we're going to talk about choosing, choosing bearish securities. So I'll give you some best practices with that. Um, we'll talk about timing and, and trade entry tools that are available. So we'll go through the options play tool as well. So I'll make sure that that's adequately covered. Um, and then we'll talk about optimal option strategies, the environment, when to put them on. Timing is extremely important as well. So just not only knowing them, but the optimal optimal placement is extremely important. And then, of course, save some time for Q&A. So looking at a, a bear market, this is a, a larger view of the market overall. Um, but what constitutes a bear market, just by definitional perspective, is a 20% decline in the market overall. So that happened, as you can see on the chart, from here to here, that's when we, technically speaking, entered into a bear market by its definition. Um, since 1932, there's been about, what, every 56 months or so, so every nine or so years, a bear market. So chances are you have the averages are about 14 in your lifetime that you're going to experience. And the beauty of options, like I was saying, is you can utilize them and, and time appropriately. Um, there's there's ways to dollar cost average utilizing options. So lots of advantages with options and bear markets, not only from directional trading, but within high implied volatility environments, as well as hedging for securities that you currently own. And then, of course, the VIX. I think this is important to talk about, especially as in the market and in the media, we talk a lot about the word capitulation. And capitulation, like you can see this big spike right here. This is the COVID lows. So we would expect to see a huge spike in the volatility index to indicate a capitulation happens, which just means that all of the sellers have exited the market, which means now there is an area of um, demand that could come in pushing the securities back up. So that's where we try to find market bottoms. That necessarily has not happened yet. But what you can see is we're in an area of heightened or elevated volatility for a longer period, which means that we may not necessarily get that capitulation that the market is used to. And additionally, know that, especially with options, so the volatility index, the VIX, especially off of the S&P 500, the calculation is based off of SPX options contracts, which means that we have to take into account how those are traded now. And our previous bear markets, aside from this, this COVID spike, didn't have as much of a retail presence because there's a lot of retail trading, whereas options were traditionally used by institutions. Now that retail trading is more dominant, which almost explains why we're not seeing that big spike if you dive into what makes up that calculation. And remember, it's also 23 to 30 days ahead. So something to take into account. And let's look at a few bear market stats. So the definition, like I said, is a decline of 20% from its peak and with higher market volatility. So higher market volatility, that means rallies are also going to drastically spike as well as declines. And I think there's a really great analogy where we say you, you fall down the stairs, but you climb back up. That is true with the larger picture of the market. However, while we're in the bear market and we have that elevated volatility, we see that spike from the upside as well, which means rallies can be just as strong as declined, which has held true throughout this entire bear market. Um, and there's just some average stats as far as their long, their average duration, um, which is much, much shorter than a bull market, which holds true to that. The decline on a larger basis is quicker than the overall 
increase. Um, bear market hot. Bear market rallies are very true. They happen. We're in one right now. They trade higher 60% of the time and lower 40% of the time, which also makes sense with that sharp decline followed by a gradual rise. Um, and more importantly, and I think this is a great one, pulling some stats from the 01, that was a, a um, the, the internet pop, and then 08, the great financial crisis, the bear market rallies that were experienced in that time that were greater than 5% were between 10 and 13. So that is an important stat to be aware of that these are normal and will happen often. So therefore, we need to understand that for optimal timing perspectives. And then the last and certainly not least is velocity and volatility that they sell off faster and then climb on rallies, which I said was the first one. And know that if you do a look at the past 20 years within the S&P 500, half of the strongest days, as in huge days to the upside, happened during bear market rallies, um, which again has held true. We had one a couple weeks ago where we started down 600 points and ended up um, 700 points, I think on the Dow, which is set a record, if you will. So here's no rule number one when you're trading in a bear market. And this is applicable to when you're trading options or whatever product that you are. It's the mindset. So the cost of your mindset. And so this is the S&P 500. And you can do this with any index is understand that when you're investing, not only are you risking dollars, but you're also risking volatility. So you have to accept that that's what is going to happen. These movements are normal. However, you have to have a disciplined approach and go into trading with a disciplined approach, especially with heightened volatility. It makes it, it it's more difficult because sometimes you, you may lose quicker than you can make money due to the volatility. So first of all, the cost of your mindset is just choosing not to go into a bear market. And that's why I have mistake written here. If you were starting investing here at the peak before a bear market, and this is a rhythmic chart, not logarithmic, you might've thought that that was absolutely a mistake because it all of a sudden it's going down drastically. So this is the 2001 and, and 08 level. However, in the longer term, if you would have used options or you dollar cost averaged in, or even bought here, at the peaks, you would have made out in the long run because that's the way the market has been over time. And of course, this is a extreme example because normally when we pull a chart with this, we show you a logarithmic, which will, will smooth it out a little bit. So number one is just your trading mindset. Keep that in mind as we go through this. Number two is strategy selection. So there are three separate buckets that I would put trading bear markets into options with. First is hedging. So this is on securities that you already own. So you want to protect against a market downturn and you want to essentially buy insurance for whatever security that you own. So you are anticipating a decline. You can do this a couple of ways. First is just simply, and we'll go through these in detail, but buying that put, which will essentially a put goes down, or excuse me, goes up in value as the underlying security goes down, which means that as your stock goes down, it offsets those losses. So you just kind of capture a moment in time, but that put is only insuring your securities for through the expiration date. So that's one method and we'll go a little bit deeper. The other is a collar. So I'll give you the beginner and advanced of each of these types of strategies. A collar is where we we simply have that same long put, but we also give ourselves some upside potential where we'd be willing to sell our security during a bear market rally, but that can actually finance your downside protection as well. So your risk is you're going to cap your upside potential if there's a large bear market rally. If it goes beyond your strike, you are not going to participate in that capital appreciation. However, you've really mitigated the cost of your long put, which means that you've, you've adjusted your risk exposure and kept your downside protection. So that's hedging, and we'll spend a lot of time on hedging because that's that's an important concept that you can use just on securities that you already own. Second is directional. So this is where you wanna capitalize on a sharp downwards movement. So anytime you're buying options, regardless if we're looking at a downwards movement or an upwards movement, 
we are looking for a sharp movement, meaning it's not neutral. We need something to move a lot to be profitable. And that's when we're on the buy side of option because we are buying time, essentially. And we'll talk more about that. So you're anticipating a decline in the underlying quite drastically. Your trade would be a long put, which would just makes money as the security goes down. And your advanced trade would be a debit put spread, which is where you just cap your gain potential to the short strike. And again, we've got some examples that we'll go through. And then the third is income and high implied volatility. So this is where you're, you're neutral to bearish. And this is where premiums get really expensive in volatile markets. So we want to sell options during volatile markets. That way, if something is more expensive, that's a moment where we want to sell. And the goal of those options are to expire, but that time value and volatility will collapse as the option nears expiration. And we'll tell you how to tactically go through that. So you're looking for a continued decline um, and a clear resistance to a rally. And we'll talk about how to spot that. And your trade would be a short call, which makes money as the security goes down, but you are profitable as long as the security is just directly underneath your strike price. And it can be by a penny. And that is why that is called bearish to neutral because we don't need that sharp directional move to be profitable. And then of course, the advanced version of that is just capping your risk potential. And we'll again, talk about that in detail. Now, I know I threw a lot at you there. And what I like to do is give you this T-chart. And if you've attended any sessions with me personally or with options play, we show this to you quite a bit because every option strategy is built by these four individual legs. So if you, and every everything is also a mirror of itself. So if you know a long call very, very well when we teach the basics, we always really focus on a long call, show you this chart, and then you can essentially figure everything else out. But what I want you to take away from this on the bearish side is we're going to look at um, all of these, to be honest, but I'll, I'll show you how you can use them within a bearish market environment. Long options, they profit from sharp movement. They time decay is negative, period, regardless if it's a call or a put. And that's why we need a sharp movement. So now we know if it's a bear market and I'm buying an option, I'm going to bear a strategy on the buy side as a long put, and I know I need a sharp movement. So that's that's my need there as I'm anticipating a huge downturn. Whereas the short call, the short call Time decay is positive, which means as the option nears expiration, it depletes in value. That works for me because they're sold to open, we'll buy it to close. So therefore it profits from a neutral to a downwards movement. So that's what we wanna keep in mind. And then the others are used for risk mitigation, which again, we're gonna go through in a lot of detail. So a really great, great chart just to, to keep handy. So let's talk about hedging. And I've got some examples I'm gonna put on a chart for you just to keep it evergreen. So again, we wanna protect against a market downturn. And I've got an example for you. So let's say that we purchased a security at $520 per share. And we are afraid that this will go down with the market. And that happens even if you have a security the very solid earnings and growth, macro headwinds and macro environments can drive the overall market. We certainly saw that this morning. So that's where hedging is certainly helpful in those type of scenarios. So, so I purchased my security at $520 per share. What I can do is buy a long out of the money put at 510. So it's a real price for 1250. This means I spent $12.50. If the security declines beyond 510, this starts collecting value. Now remember this $12.50 is time value because this isn't worth anything because the right to sell at 520 at the market price is much better than the right to sell at 510. So that's why it's an out of the money option. Um, it did cost us $12.50, which means we need a decline beyond that for this to 
to be profitable. So we still got ourselves some protection, but we have a $22.50 decline before that protection really kicks in if we were to hold that till expiration. And that's where a collar is extremely helpful. Let's offset that cost of that expensive insurance, if you will. So we would sell a call, so a 540 call in this scenario. This is out of the money because a call contains the right to buy and the right to buy at 540 is less advantageous than the market price of 520. So I'm assuming the market price is 520 in this scenario. Therefore, this is out of the money and this is extrinsic value that's going to decay. So what I've done here is I reduced my risk exposure and I've now paid 40 cents to buy this protective put. There is an offset though. Remember risk versus reward is extremely important. If this rallies to 540, I'm going to sell the security and I'm okay with that because that's what this short call does. It obligates me to sell my stock at $540 per share at the buyer's discretion. So what I've done essentially, a collar, and it's just like the name, collar around the security is on the bottom. I have a predefined sell point, which acts as insurance that's going to gain value as the security goes down. And then I also have an obligation to sell on the higher end. So I sold that option to offset the cost of my long option. So that, that's a caller. And there's actually a lot of um, really popular hedge funds that do this strategy. And they even take it a step further and will sell a put at their lower level here, which is helpful if, if you're using technical analysis. I see a huge resistance point there. Apologize that moved. So you could even sell a short put farther out of the money and it will bring in additional credit, but you're again, risk versus reward. You're going to cap where that insurance policy will, will essentially end. So that's hedging in a nutshell, starts with a long put and then the advanced version would be a caller, which is just a covered call with a long put. So let's talk about directional. So now we have a different view we don't own the security and we are expecting a huge decline, not necessarily on earnings because that's heightened volatility. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but maybe there is some type of fiscal policy we're waiting on or someone is going to speak from a monetary policy. All of these things are driving the market right now um, or the chip act, something like that. You think there's going to be a large directional move. Um, so therefore, these are the trades that we're going to put in. So we'll start with a long put. So we have a long at the money put that's $530. That's gonna cost us $20.65. Now that is a little expensive, but on percentage terms to the price of the security makes sense. This means that we need this stock to go below about $510 per share before this is profitable at expiration. But as that moves up, we wanna make sure we close out long options, never hold them until expiration because this entire $20.65 is going to decay. And if I experience that sharp movement downwards, I want to make sure that I sell to close my option prior to that time value completely decaying. So if I buy time, I wanna sell time when I'm closing my trade. So buy put to open, sell put to close, I'm selling my put to close. Um, really about 14 days until expiration is that sweet spot because that's when that theta decay just rapidly comes in. So time value just moves so, so quickly. Now, if we were going to um, reduce the cost of that, this is where we would do a short out of the money put. So now we receive less for this and that makes sense because the right to sell at 470 is less advantageous than the right to sell at 530. Therefore, this is logically more expensive. But now what we've done is we've reduced our cost of this trade and we've capped how far we think it will go. So if we don't think this will go beyond 470, this makes sense. Now we have a sharp directional movement. We are mitigating our that time exposure that you have to be careful of when you're buying options. So when you're, it's, it's what side of the coin am I on? in regard to time with options. That's extremely, extremely important. So in this case, I capped my downwards potential, reduced how much it cost me to buy this 
debit put spread or fair put spread. And I make max profit when this underlying security hits 470. And normally the time value offsets each other. So let's look at income strategies or high implied volatility. So we've been talking in a little bit about pricing without directly saying pricing. So an options price is made up of, of three components. And those three components are in two categories, which are intrinsic and extrinsic value. Intrinsic is the executable value. So um, I've been saying it quite a bit, the right to sell at a advantageous price or less advantageous price. So if I have the right to sell at 100 and the underlying security is at 90, got to be worth at least 10. So that's it's in the money intrinsic value. Extrinsic value is made up of implied volatility and time. So the more time we have until expiration, the more expensive it's going to be. And that decays, it's not linear, it decays like this. And then as we get to about 14 days, falls off of a cliff, which means that if I'm buying an option, I wanna make sure I close it before those 14 days, um, before we get there. So before that falling off, because I'm gonna lose all that time value that I could have sold and captured back. But if I'm selling an option, I might wanna look farther out expiration. So I can't experience that that theta decay because that means I can buy it back at a lower price. I still don't wanna hold it till expiration because that equates to risk. We can talk about that in a moment as well. Um, and then the third component, so that was in the money value, time value is implied volatility. And that is very heightened right now. So in a, there is implied volatility sometimes is just natural with some securities, but in a bearish environment, which is also known as a high implied volatility environment, volatile environment, that's also heightened on the call and the put side, which means great selling opportunities as in selling options. So this is where we have a directional view on a security, but we profit as long as it is, just makes that directional move a little bit, which means in this scenario, we're gonna be neutral to bearish. And then of course you flip this to the put side, neutral to bullish. So we profit from expensive premiums we would execute on this strategy when we feel like there will be a decline and it's best suited when you're right at the top of a key resistance point. So if this is no longer coming, I know it's going to decline. I'm not sure perhaps by much because of other events. So therefore I might sell this here because we're at the peak of a rally, which is where there's some volatility on the call side. We're gonna sell on the call side um, and capitalize on that. So what we do is say we wanna short a 5.30 call, and this is out of the money and it's costing us 16.60. So we're selling it. So we receive 16.60. I would buy an option that's farther out of the money at 5.60. So because remember the right to buy at 5.30 is more advantageous than 5.60. We call this strategy driver. And we profit from this short call, it reaches maximum profit potential as long as the underlying security is directly below. So literally 5, 29, and 99. That's it. That's all we need. Just one penny and we keep that 1660. Sorry about that. And the long option here, that's intended to offset our risk exposure. So we do reduce the credit that we received, but there is a reason behind that. So when you short a call, you are obligated to sell your shares at the strike because it contains the right to buy and you're on the other side of that transaction. So if somebody wants to buy the security at 530, they're not going to execute upon those rates unless it makes sense, which is when the security is above 530, which means you could be obligated to sell those shares at an infinitely high price. So we need to cap, give ourselves a right to buy scenario, capping our risk potential, which is the purpose of adding the long call is you say, okay, here's the, the right to buy. So if the security moves against me, I'm accepting less credit, but I'm not exposing myself to unlimited risk. And this is the only option strategy. If it contains a short call without an offsetting position that has unlimited risk potential. Um, and that can be dangerous, has higher margin requirements. So by executing it this way, you have less margin that's required, but you also reduce your upside potential if you are wrong. And what's really important with options is we skew 
risk versus reward in our favor. So anytime that we're creating a strategy, and that is the key, and if you're not listening to anything else, I'd say this is the one you want to write down and keep. Um, whenever you place a trade on the buy side, if you are um, buying an option, whether it's it's call, put, debit spread, just you're, you're buying, period, you need to make sure you can make at least three times then the cost of the trade. That's risk versus reward skewed in your favor. I can make more than what I'm risking. The inverse happens on the short call side because it's less directional. We don't need as much move. So you're going to end up losing about three times more than the credit that you're receiving. Ideally, you'd want that a two to one. But remember, it's less directional. So that's why it's that way. When you trade that way, you have to understand you are not going to profit and you are not going to call every strategy. It's not going to happen. But if you skew risk versus reward in your favor and use a portion of your accounts, you will profit in the long run. Because if, if you think about three to one, you do three trades, that's and you're on the losing side, you're you're still breaking even in that scenario. Um, but really we'd want, want you to, to, to make more than that. So it's an important nugget of information, especially when you're trading, but something I do want to talk about if we're talking about unlimited risk exposure options like the short out of the money call list. So I have a couple of examples um, and we can go through the options play platform as well, but just want to talk about the best practices that are involved with this. So for that credit spread that I just brought up, we want 45 days until expiration, because remember, we want to capitalize on theta decay. So that's what we're going to, to use. We'll sell a 50 delta, which just means it's an at the money call. So this is the same thing that I showed you earlier, just with different words. Um, so 50 delta means right at the money, 20 delta is farther away. You can choose options by using delta, standard, your strike prices, by standard deviations or technical analysis and the security itself at options play. We do that all for you. And I can show you that as well. Um, and just some best practices as far as, as when to close out. Um, and this duplicate is let's get over here. And then as far as the debit spread side, we look at 50 to 60 days till expiration. So you want a longer expiration time frame, And that is because of that theta decay that I was talking about earlier. We want to be able to sell to close that option before we reach expiration, which means we need a little more time. I know zero DTE or zero data expiration options are extremely popular right now. Those just equate to risk um, and essentially are, are, are gambling. You need a directional play. And if you're selling those options, you are giving up the theta decay that will work in your favor. Um, so these are the best practices. Um, get questions, where do those best practices come from? They were back tested on um, all of the S&P 500 securities over a very long period of time to get the ideal time frame, which you will be have higher probability of profit, which is also why we display those on the platform as well. For your strike prices, you can do an at the money, but you can also go a little deeper in the money, which is a 60 delta. Um, that reduces how much time you buy if you go deeper in the money because theta is centered around at the money options. That's why I love to teach the Greeks because it helps you pick your strike prices with execution. And then of course you want to sell an option with a 15 or 20, so um, which just means farther out of the money. And if we're just choosing underlying securities, um, I want to give you just a checklist for getting some ideas of what you're looking for. And I'll show you the tools that you have available to you to find those ideas. So number one is we're going to look for an overpriced security. That is an opportunity, something that has a higher than average valuation relative to its peers or a um, higher growth rate that, that makes Perfect sense. So a lot of times um, you'll hear people say, oh, that has a super, super high PE. That means it's overpriced. So that's what you could look for is a high price to earnings ratio versus the industry average. And your brokerage firm normally has those details. And we also have them on the platform. Number two is earnings that are reliant on future expectations. So this makes so much sense in the tech sector because there's a lot of CapEx spending um, and they're their earnings may have upfront costs based on innovation. Actually, Meta is the best example of this that's coming to mind right now because they've invested so much in the metaverse. That is probably going to absolutely pay them some dividends. But 
not now. It will when it's adopted. There's a lot of other things that have to happen. So those earnings are reliant on future expectations. And that's so important to think about with the market overall is they are pricing to each earnings cycle. And there's just headwinds or events that come out like rallies in dollar or anything that that adjusts the what the price should be that then is normalized as soon as earnings report. And then you have that three month span again. So something that is reliant on future expectations is going to be a stock that could potentially be bearish because when it comes to its earnings cycle, may miss. Um, and if they have minimal or negative margins, so high levels of debt, negative cash flow. Uh, a, if you have a margin, I'd like to describe it as a savings account. Um, that's intended for when money is tight, so you can pay your or your emergency fund, I guess, with um, you can pay your expenses. However, that means money is tight. So somebody, tech companies have these, but a lot of others as well. They have a narrow profit margin, and there is a high interest rate environment, which means it's harder for them to more expensive for them to borrow more expensive for them to pay their debt, things of that nature, they're going to really put pressure on those profit margins, which could translate into negative earnings. So therefore, this is a great checklist that we've put together as far as what you can look for to identify a bearish stock. And then you can just flip this all around to give you a bullish stock. And let's talk about trading tips in a bear market, and then I'll give you your tools and resources, and we can go through finding some ideas, because that's certainly what we're here for. So number one is high implied volatility or high volatility. Option selling is going to have an advantage in high volatility environments, which is what's occurring right now. Um, consider your time horizon. So there is that emotional aspect that you must be cognizant of. Um, decisions should always be calm, excuse me, calculated. Those type of decisions are extremely important. Anytime you invest your money, anytime that you make a, a big decision in your life that includes money, so whether it's a new home or something like that, you do your homework. Um, however, if time horizon is something that you can use since it's not a tangible asset on options. So shorter dated options can reduce your time exposure as well. Um, spreads, as I hope you've learned today, if you've never seen those, can offset your risk exposure. So if you notice with the bear call spreads, we offset our risk exposure to the upside by giving us a predefined buy point in exchange for less of a premium. And then when we have the debit puts, we capped our gain potential to the downside, but we reduced how much we invested. So in both scenarios, we're reducing our risk exposure just in different ways. And that's the beauty of spreads and layering options can do for you. And then of course, scale in and out. You don't have to do everything in one trade. Please don't do that. Um, you should do portions of your account. The 2% rule is, is really great. Never use more than 2% of the overall account within one strategy. Um, you can adjust that based on your risk tolerance. That is a personal level. And we've got tools in the platform that will do that on your behalf. But even on the individual trade, you can start with one contract and you can add another. You can certainly scale into it instead of just saying this is it or, or not. So that, that's an important and helpful tool. Um, with TMX, we've got some really great reports that are helpful. So we do have covered call opportunity reports and they're free to use. So I wanna make sure that I share them with you with the QR code. Um, I apologize, I couldn't update the screenshot here. However, um, if you scan that QR code on the screen, it will give you a list of securities that are optimal for covered calls. That's a bullish strategy, but I wanted to make sure that you were aware of those resources um, as well as with the short put. Um, so with that, I'll give you our, our options play screen. Know that you have the TMX platform available to you. Just go to optionsplay.com slash TMX. They make sure that that is available to you. So I certainly would recommend using that. And then I'm gonna take you through what that platform has and how you can find some ideas. All right. So in your trade ideas, we by default are going to list ideas. These are updated daily. But what I want you to take note of is the trend. So right now we've got 
only bullish trends, but that's where we scan and do everything for you. So this first column is intended to be where your ideas are. You can filter through this um, based on the trend. I didn't see anything bearish, so I know it's not going to pull up and specific scans, and then that will apply and give you um, ideas. Now on the watch list side, here's where we'll have a lot more securities that are going to filter up with TMX. And here we can filter through bearish or bullish, but we wanna make it visually easy on you. So anything that is red just indicates the six month trend is bearish, yellow, neutral, green, bullish. And what's helpful with that is once you've found a security that you want to place a trade on, um, let's do, let's do BMO because it's neutral. So this is interesting and I'm glad this is proving my point here. Um, so if you have the six month trend is neutral, a longer trend the way technical analysis works has strength. The one month trend may be a sign of reversal, but when both match, then that's when you really have a strong trend. Right now, both do not match. And this makes sense because we have the one month trend is absolutely bullish, but overall in six month period, that is bearish. When both match, then that gives us more conviction of our directional view. However, if it's neutral, that's something that you can do that, um, that bear call spread on. So there's additional information here as well. So all the information that you need from an options perspective in the security quote. So their earnings per share, their PE ratio, a yield if applicable, um, relative strengths gives you an idea of the strength of the trend and that's gonna be important as well. And then of course, if you really want to chart additionally, there's drawing tools that are found on this platform that you can select here. Um, and there is also a ton of indicators that you can add to the chart and then you can expand it here if you would like. And of course, it's very interactive. Now, once we decide what we want to trade, I'll just use the bear call spread. We've got um, two that I will take you through today. So first is bearish strategies. So this will be on the trading side. These are comparing selling short stock versus buying that put and the debit put spread that we talked about today. So we're going, those best practices that I shared with you, we're going to pre-populate that for you. You can modify it and see what happens based on your price target, what will be more profitable. And you can see if this goes very, very high, this has the unlimited risk potential because it's short 100 shares. However, the risk is limited to what we spent in both scenarios. So this is the reducing your risk exposure. And if it goes in your favor, um, this of course is going to make more but that's a, a very huge decline in the scenario because we capped our risk potential here at 120. So this is a great way to also learn, um, take a look at theta decay and how that affects the option as well as implied volatility movements. Now, high implied volatility, this is where you're gonna find that bear call spread. And we also give you the sentiment of the strategy. So rule of thumb is, and the way we've designed this is, here's my underlying security, the six month trend, okay, I found an idea this one I need to pay attention to. Let me verify that trend with some technical analysis and um, so the readings that we've done for you. Then you adjust your trade from there and get an idea and compare and contrast, focus on risk versus reward. And we do as much as we can to, to really lift the, the working aspect off of you. And that's where this options play score comes in. If you've noticed that, that takes into account what you see on the screen. So my cost versus my reward and my risk, probability of profit and break even, and develops the score. Anything over 100 is considered good, anything under not. So that's how you can, can verify that. Um, we're talking about the, the short call here. So if I want to trade this, for example, I just hit the trade tab. All the information that you need to enter it into your brokerage firm is found here as well as the checklist. So the stock trend and the market trend doesn't match up, doesn't have a score above 100, and there's an earnings date coming up, which means there could be a huge movement, which is risk for us on the sell side. Um, so that's important to know. And you can also pay for trade and add this position to your portfolio if you just wanna see what happens, which is also a wonderful tool. 
And we did speak about a caller, so I do want to show you how to use that on the platform. Um, I'll do that with a just the long put here. So you can actually click modify it in any trading strategy. And there are over 45 here where we can choose any strategy that we want to add. So there's certainly a lot that you can do with the platform. So this just puts in buying the shares, buying the put, and then selling the call. So that caller that we were discussing, and you can adjust and modify the strikes and expiration here. So I hope that was certainly useful for you. I apologize about being kicked out of the platform earlier. However, um, it's certainly an interesting type of market and options are such a beautiful thing because you can trade them in any type of market. Today, we focused on strategies that are profitable in bear markets, so neutral declines um, and of course, hedging. So if you have any questions, um, got a couple moments, you can certainly ask them now. And otherwise, I, I appreciate you taking the time to learn today. Um, yes, the screen recording will come out. So if you registered, we always send the recording out um, usually 24 to 48 hours after the event, as well as a copy of the slides. Oh, no worry. Um, if you did not register and you still want to attend it, you can just send an email to info at optionsplay.com and we can send you the recording. Otherwise, it's found on TMX YouTube. Uh, channel as well. We will post it there as well. Um, and this platform does not support bots. However, everything is automated. So it's designed for optimal strategies. So meaning the, um, the strategies that are depicted when you choose your strategy is based on those best practices. So that's an automation that's there. And those reports that I showed you earlier are also screening. So there's no automatic trading that's with this because it's not connected to a brokerage firm. However, it's utilized to find those optimal ideas in which place you can place those trades at your brokerage firm. All right. Well, I think that will cover it for today. I really appreciate, again, your attendance and engaging conversation. I hope you found this beneficial. Have any suggestions or any other topics, please let us know. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great week and happy trading.